It's a simple thing. Nobody. I had people who had first class, very brilliant, while I was here. But I can tell people that I, I passed through here. And this, sat in a class with people. My lecturers are there. People like Professor Wala. I'm still, I'm still close to them till today. So it is important that we look at this ethical leadership. That is what is propelling society. That's what making society go. People are telling their people the truth. What is happening? I came back. I was in Bangladesh on Friday. And I felt so sad for Nigeria. It's a country I visited in 2007, 2009, 2015, and going back there in 2003, I was in pain. In pain. Because this is a country that has the same size as ours. They don't have oil. They are not exporting oil. They are not doing anything. They are just trying to do the right things by having the ethical leadership Ben preach today. By having the ethical leadership, Ben preach today. Just to not to go back to those years I'm telling you, but just 20, by 20, 2009, when I visited there for the first time, Bangladesh had a per capita of $688. Call it seven hundred dollars. Nigeria was two thousand, almost two thousand plus. By twenty fifteen, they were one thousand about one thousand three hundred. We were two thousand six hundred and something, almost two thousand seven. Today, Bangladesh per capita is two thousand seven. We are 2,100. We've lost almost 30% of what we were a few years ago. They have, within these 15 years, done four, four, four times their per capita. You could see the infrastructure. When I, in 2009, their unemployment were over 10%. It was there by June or July 2009. Today, they are under 5%. And you could see it. You could feel it. This place is just collapsing by the day. And all people there used to tell us lies. I came back there and told somebody, you don't go to look for foreign investor. Anybody who tells you going around the world to look for foreign investor is wasting everybody's time. Foreign investor is like bee and honey. If you put honey here, how the bee will come in Nobody will tell you. I told you Macron finished G20 meeting, flew to Bangladesh, because Bangladesh has just ordered 10 Airbus 350. So you have to go and see them, because they're coming. If you look at all the coming analysis, go and Google where Bangladesh will be in 2030, where they will be in 2050. Nobody knows where we're going to be. With all this lying... A joke and everything, and people think it's about A or B or C. No. A deputy governor was just asked, you didn't go to school. He said, it doesn't matter. But you feel it. You were the one who said, I went to this school. Nobody forced you. If you, if you know it doesn't matter, you would have said, I didn't go to school. So we imagine your ingenuity as somebody who didn't go to school and was able to come up to this. But don't say things we have now reached a country where, like Ben said, where people say something and do something else. I asked a woman to queue. He told me, whenever I queue, I don't get anything. This happened to me last year. So whenever I queue, I don't get anything. And after the, 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 the tribunal decided our case, I called the woman and I said, I'm sorry. Whenever I queue, I don't get anything. Because we had somebody going around the world saying this is how he's going to conduct the election. Everywhere you go, it says, real, it was in that I heard what was called real time. Suddenly, he said, no, he can do it anyhow. 
Why didn't you tell us this anyhow? So that we can behave anyhow when we are voting as well. That is your country. That is what Ben is preaching today. And unless we do that, it will not work. Unless we do that, it will not work. We all pass through here. This university. Look at what we're teaching people. When I came I come into this hall, I feel a pain of loss. And I'm sure if you see, you'll be feeling it. This is our refectory. I protested in this refectory when they reduced our meat from three to two. Meat, meat. Meat, oh, today. <laughs> If you see food, then you won lottery. <laughs> meat, they reduce meat, not food, in this refectory. Because all I need to do is to come back to university, go and buy my meal coupon and keep it, and I'm sure every time I come here, I eat what I want. Everybody's happy. The same school today have completely collapsed. The children don't know what is happening. They don't know anything about school. Nobody cares. VC, thank you for what your, your team are doing. At least they sell something anybody can look at here. I've been to other universities and I can tell you it's a total mess. The money will give my neck to tell us that they can do whatever they like. If we gave it to Nigerian universities, they would have done what we wanted them to do. They won't do whatever they like without the money. But we gave them 400 something billion naira to do whatever they like. Only in Nigeria. You give money, people, that amount of money. As at that time, one billion dollars to do whatever they like. And that is your country. If one billion dollars were given to Nigerian universities, imagine if they have given Vice Chancellor Igwe, 50 billion naira. <laughs> Imagine what the university would have been. They didn't give him anything, but they gave it to another professor to do whatever he likes. It's unfortunate. I only ask for prayers for Nigeria. It's a collapsed country. Is a failed state. All we need to do is collectively say no to that. People think it's about Peter. It's not about Peter. We've been president of Nigeria. I want Nigeria to work. Work for everybody. It is not about tribe. It's not about tribe. It's not about religion. It's not about tribe. It's not about religion. No religion buys bread cheaper. No religion or ethnic group buys bread cheaper. We are the ones fixing this thing. Thank you, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor, because we support us with the Governor of Enugu State. I must say with their support. He, my uh, Deputy, I'm I, I was able to do even what I'm doing today in Bishop Shanahan. And so, like I told the Bishop, you know, I was shocked today by the people who went with me there will be equally experience that. I'm doing a project there for the School of Medical Sciences. It's costing them about, about 150 million naira. And I said, I'm going to pay every cover of this. But I'm doing it. I'm doing it because they authorized it. But it was shocking what happened to me today. When I went to see the Bishop of Osaka, he told me an interesting thing today. He said to me, Peter, you've done a lot for us. The Anglican bishop, he said, I told him, I said, yeah, I met the Anglican bishop of Osaka, and he said to me that he also has a health center, and I told him I'm going to help. I'm going to do a lot for him. The bishop said, please, we are brothers. Do it. When people go to hospital, they don't ask them their religion. They treat them. So soon I, I told him, I said, 20th, today is 20th, that 20th of next month, I'm going to come in to start facing the hospital that belongs to the Anglican Bishop of Hong <laughs> These are things, with the help of the governor of Enugu State, I must tell you, I attract the money 
they support it. Attract the money, they support it. These are what governance should be. And this is what we should do. Not to go and be doing other things wrong. So Ben, I thank you for bringing us together for this wonderful lecture. When I start quoting you, I hope you will not say, hey, this man, because I'm going to be quoting every chapter of that and everything, you know, on what you said today, it is, I've, for me, it's been a very pleasant, good day. I'm not going to, for me, I'm going to go out here today, a fulfilled learner. Because I said, leadership is that listening and learning. I listen and I learn the Lord. And you're going to be seeing it when I do this thing. For the students, it is about your future. Everything we are doing is about your future. Do not allow us to ruin your future. Do not allow us to ruin your future. You cannot be. Changes in every society came from people of your age and people of your time. You can no longer be running away from your country. Some of you dying in ships and in seas. We protested for slave trade. Now Nigerians are selling themselves. Please buy me to Canada. Buy me to Japan. Buy me. When our parents resisted to be sold, they were in chains to be sold. Today, I'm sure, if anybody brings chain and say he wants to change people to Canada, people will queue up and take the chain and follow the person to Canada. That cannot happen again. We must stop it. It is about your society. Help them to stop the abuse. The lecture of Bennett Tiaba today is something I want you to take home, listen to it over and over again. It's about you. It's about you. Don't allow us to ruin your future. Because the society we are building will only take its revenge on you. God bless all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. We thank you very much, very sincerely. Our chairman is an extraordinary Nigerian. In him, we see a very bright future for this country. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi. Thank you, the keynote address speaker, Chief Ben Etiaba, for awakening the consciousness of Nigerians to ethical leadership. We thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. The students will still have time for that. Yes, he's a member. So we want to go straight to awards. We request the registrar, Professor Odo, and of course, uh, The Vice Chancellor will make the presentation. The Registrar will conduct the robing together with our... Uh... The DVC administration, please, we request your presence here. You'll be robed for the award. The VC will make the award presentations. Um, cameraman, please, you know your perimeter. Thank you very much. Currently, we are robing uh, the awardees. We are robbing our very own mother, the first female governor in Nigeria, the first female governor of Anambra State, the first female deputy governor, Her Excellency, 
then Vegetiaba. Her Excellency, then Vegetiaba. Thank you. Please, uh, if you have, uh, I request uh, the drums can go down so that we can hear ourselves. We request the Vice Chancellor to come and make the presentations of ethical leadership awards to ve these very deserving Nigerians. The Vice Chancellor. Thank you. Ikorodo, can we have it down? Thank you. We want to hear the Vice Chancellor. Question on the existing protocol. Uh, Your Excellency, I prefer calling you Mama Nambra. The University of Nigeria, Directorate of Strategic Contacts, Ethics, and Publications, under the Vice Chancellor's Office, has asked me to present this award of excellence to you, Her Excellency, Dr. Dem Veji Etiaba, as partner and fellow of Ethical Leadership, Lifetime Achievement Award as a model, mother, and excellent leader. Given this day, 20th September, year of our Lord, 2023, congratulations to you, ma. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Her Excellency Dem Veji Etiaba. The next award is I've learned today is that if you have good parents, even when they are alive or dead, you will always want to remember when you want to do those bad things, you know, and you will remember how mom or dad will caution you and say, What are you doing? And I've learned that uh, today you are following the trend. And uh, the University of Nigeria, Directorate of Strategic Contacts, Ethics and Publications under the Vice Chancellor's Office, has asked me to present this award of excellence to you, Chief Ben Etiaba, as a research fellow and partner of ethical leadership, given this day of our Lord, the 20th September, 2023. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, the next award. Thank you, Chief Ben Etiaba. For the award of excellence on ethical leadership. Mr. Vice Chancellor, wait. Hello, thank please, you. Please, take please. it down, take it down. Please. The, the next inductee, Mr. Vice Chancellor, we inducted you last time with Monsignor Obiorike. This time around, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, your deputy, Professor Pat Oboko. We need to recognize our own ethical leaders, as His Excellency Peter B has said. Therefore, we call him forward for the, both administrative and moral support and being totally obedient to you. Uh, so, Mr. Vice Chancellor, I hand the mic over to you as we rob him. And, uh, 
The next awardee is the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Administration of the University of Nigeria, Professor Pat Uche Oboko. He's going to be inducted as a fellow of ethical leadership. That is where we are going to promotion of ethical leadership. The University of Nigeria and Soka is committed to that through the Strasep. <laughs> and if you look at the next item, the next, the next item states what is needed to promote ethical leadership starting from the University of Nigeria. Just recently, the Strasep in, inaugurated ethical desk officers in all the departments of the University of Nigeria. We want to promote in ethical and responsible leadership starting from University of Nigeria. Mr. Vice Chancellor, over to you, please. Yeah, let me, Your Excellency, the former governor of Anambra State, Mr. Peter Obi, you may not, you may not know that, you may not know that there's an evil adage that says, Ananaga, open aga wala wala, Ananaga wala wala, this year. Here we have a replica of the then Anambra State. And there's a deputy vice chancellor here. Of course, all of us will have nicknames. But this deputy vice chancellor has a nickname, Peter Odi. Not because, not because of blood relationship, but because he will even. Before the vice chancellor moves to a project site, they will go with his tape and measure and try to take records of everything, either with the contractor or with the tenders board or with anything. And today, I am particularly happy that the University of Nigeria Directorate of Strategic Contacts, Ethics and Publication under the vice chancellor's office has asked me to present this award to our own Peter Obi, or in quote, I'm not talking about Peter Obi, the former governor of Anambra State. And that person is the person of Professor Pat Okoko, who is the Deputy Vice Chancellor at the Administration University of Nigeria. As a research fellow and partner of ethical leadership for administrative support, advisory services in the formation of the new ethical policy given on this 20th day of September 2023. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations to the awardees. Thank you. We are going to take responses from the awardees. But, but let me emphasize that in order to, in order to promote ethics, Thank you, photographers. We are done. Take the shots and then uh, we are through. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to take the next item. Response. We want to take responses. Please, it's important to note that the Strasep UNN needs a building, a new building, where they can train our students on ethical leadership. They need uh, vehicles, they need equipment, they need training and scholarship funds. The issue of ethical leadership is very critical for our country, not just for the University of Nigeria. We want to take responses from a terrible family. All protocols duly observed. May I start, it has to be very brief though. May I start by, first of all, acknowledging
the fact that the lady who is popularly known and referred to as Mama Nambra today, whose achievements we have all tried to articulate and sing praises with, uh, is a lady whose beginning in public political sphere started with a man called Mr. P.O.B. Mr. P.O.B. was the governorship candidate of Afga at the, at the time and reached out to her uh, to run with her as his deputy. And so it is very important to say today that the story of Mrs. Etiaba Dembeji Etiaba as a public servant, as one who has excelled at the public uh, political spheres, could not have been the same if there was no Mr. Pidobi. And so may we give him a round of applause for this. <laughs> On behalf of the Etiaba family, um, having been mandated by Dame Vijay Etiaba and our own uh, Bennett Etiaba, sir, uh, I feel strong to respond to this August occasion. Today, we have witnessed a marriage between the Etiaba family and the University of Nigeria and Soka, and that marriage will go far in the name of Jesus. Um, we are so very grateful for the opportunity given to our own Ben Etiaba to captivate us today with the lecture that we have had. We are more grateful for the honor that has been done to our own mother uh, haven't been recognized today. And we need the support of well many Nigerians to actualize that dream. The Strasser QNN needs a new building. The Strasser QNN needs vehicles. They need the women and the little institute scholarship fund for students in order to encourage a study of ethical leadership. It's very, very strategic and very important that we are beginning to honor Nigerians that have uh, distinguished themselves ethically and the honor will continue until we get to that point where every one of us in this country becomes ethically compliant. So we encourage our uh, women Nigerians, uh, ambassadors of ethical leadership, to please uh, look 
at the direction of the University of Nigeria in its effort to ensure that ethics is entrenched in all levels of leadership in the country. We thank His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Enugu State, that we represented. We thank His Excellency, the former Governor of Anambra State, Mr. Peter Obi. We thank His Excellency, Her Excellency, the former Governor and former Deputy Governor of Anambra State, in Beji Etiaba. We thank her. Uh, the former First Lady of Nigeria, Emeritus Professor Ucha Zikwe, for gracing today's occasion. We thank our dear Chief Ben Etiaba for doing justice to this very important topic that is critical for the survival of our dear country, Nigeria. We thank the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration of the University of Nigeria, who is here with his amiable wife and Dr. Chinwe Obogo, for all the things you do, you are the people of UNM, we know. We thank those in the entourage. Staying set fast in the course, we thank all our students for coming to this occasion. The Ikorodo Cultural Troop, we acknowledge your presence and we say thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. On behalf of my colleagues from Information and Public Relations Unit, my name is Inyaga, thanking you for being part of today's event. We hope to see you when next we call you. Do have a lovely day and celebration ahead of you. Magana Yakari, thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh.